And it is time now to take a look about what's grabbing headlines in the newspapers. And we are joined once again by Solange Majin. Hello, Solange. Hi, Nadia. Uh, you're going to be starting <coughs> us off then with uh, this tense relationship between Russia and many Western powers, which is grabbing headlines certainly in the British press today. Yeah, this comes after the United Nations uh, Security Council and after Yulia Skripal uh, gave out her first press statement. Uh, she uh, talked to the press through the police and that statement sort of debunked some of the rumors then, some of the fake news reports that have been popping up in the Russian media, such as claims that Yulia and her father are in normal and fine health. Uh, next up from you then, Solange, you've got an, a lengthy exclusive which you've dug up from the New York Times about the Islamic State group. Yeah, uh, the New York Times reporters have been working on this article for 15 months. They went through thousands of documents uh, left behind by the Islamic State group. Uh, from the documents, the reporters began to get a better understanding of uh, how the jihadists managed to create a government so quickly and how to stay in power for so long. It's a fascinating article that says that the group didn't just rule through brutality, the brutality that they're known for, but also through bureaucr bureaucracy. It explains that they held on to previous established institutions and that that was key. The group uh, also, the group basically had everything from a DMV, birth records, titles of property sales, and through these dual tools, brutality and bureaucracy, they managed to create a state and stay in power for longer than we thought they would. So that's the focus on uh, how the Islamic State group have been uh you know, imposing very difficult uh, situations on those people living in Mosul. Uh, but you also want to take a look for us uh, at the fears that people in Mosul had from uh, the international coalition bombing the, the area. Yeah, this article, it's entitled Counting the Dead in Mosul. It's in the Atlantic, and it's equally harrowing. It, 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 but it's an important and essential read. It explains that something we, something we basically know already, that during the nine months that, that it took for coalition forces to get rid of the Islamic State group in Mosul, thousands of civilians were killed in coalition coalition bombings. And the article explains that estimates of the death toll are nearly 10 times higher than thought, between nine and 11,000 civilians. And the article then goes on to explain that uh, coalition authorities, namely the United States, are not fully recognizing these deaths, and that they've only officially taken responsibility for uh, the U.S., that is, for one incident of civilian killings. Okay, so launch, well, that's Switch gears a little now then. Uh, a five-year jail sentence for one of Bollywood's biggest stars. That's all over the Indian press. Tell us the story. Yeah, it's front and center of the Indian press today. Uh, it's yesterday's sentence by uh, of Salman Khan. Uh, it's on the front pages of The Hindu and of The Times of India today. He's a megastar in India, and he's now been sent to jail for five years for killing uh, two protected antelopes in 1998. Now, that may seem like a hefty sentence for a crime that was committed 20 years ago. But the French paper Libération explains that Salman Khan, who is sort of seen as a bad boy in Bollywood, and that this is his fourth time uh, in front of judges uh, for, for crimes, including killing a homeless man by running him over with his car. So uh, every time his army of lawyers has managed to get him off. And Libé tells us, though, that the judges this time kept that in mind when they were sentencing him. Let's turn then to uh, the world of science, Solange, and a discovery that could bring hope to those people suffering with Alzheimer's, as well as all the rest of us as we age. Yeah, uh, this story made the front page of the UK Times today. It says that mental decline is not uh, can be avoided, and it's not a for, you know it's not a foregone conclusion uh, that a healthy lifestyle helps, but also a new discovery may help um, that possibly humans continue to to produce neurons even in old age. Now, this study contradicts a previous one uh, that thought we don't produce new neurons. Um, if it turns out to be true, the Times tells us that this could help doctors figure out how to better treat dementia, Alzheimer's, and just sort of old age as well. Speaking then of old, old age, Solange, uh, you found lots of tribute uh, in the press to a famed Japanese animator. Tell us a little bit more. Indeed. From the Japan Times to The Guardian, tributes are rolling in for Isao Takahata, who passed away at 82. Now, who is he? He is one of the masters of Japanese animation. He was nominated for an Academy Award four years ago, but he's, all, he's best known for his 1988 film, The Grave of Fireflies. So if you don't know his work, uh, this weekend might be a better time than ever uh, to go and see his films. Solange, thank you very much. Solange there with a roundup of all the international uh, press for us. Uh, Solange and 